Welcome to Hiraith, the home of modern Welsh politics. The campaigns are in full flow and the race to be First Minister continues. Today we are joined by Adam Price, leader of Plaid Cymru. This is obviously very different from probably pretty much every election campaign you've ever fought, but how does it feel to be leading a national campaign as opposed to just being part of one? Well, I mean, you know, there's a huge weight of responsibility I think in 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 leading a political party in, a, in in any election, but certainly in the Senate election as well. Because I, I I've I didn't expect to face a Westminster and an European election, um, uh, but we have done, of course, o- over the last uh, the recent cycle. But yes, I mean, I I feel I feel a, a real sense of personal responsibility. You know, this is a a window of political opportunity for for Wales from from my perspective, our perspective, and you've got to make it count, you know, uh, because um, uh, a lot of things are riding on on on, on this. Um, it's it, it is it's it's frustrating uh, not to be able to campaign in the traditional way. I actually like, as I said on Radio Wales recently, I actually like canvassing. Not all politicians do. Some politicians want people persons even, possibly in the wrong line of work. But uh, I actually like that engagement, even when you disagree with um, with someone, you can often find points uh, of common ground. And I always find that an incredibly positive experience because, you know, in engaging and, 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 and finding those areas of common ground, you can start to kind of move the conversation forwards, you know. So I miss that. Uh, but uh, April the 12th, of course, we'll be able to start, in, albeit in a limited fashion. How have you found this intervening period, though, the start of the campaign until, until now? Do you feel slightly sad that you can't create those connections in the same way that you would otherwise do, given that, you know, this is your opportunity to sell people on you as potentially being first minister? Yeah, it's, it's not the election campaign I'd envisaged so far or any of us, any one of us could, have, could have imagined. Uh, so, you know, that's true. But uh, you've just got to work within those constraints of you. And... and we have, I mean, I think I've done probably around 20 virtual town hall meetings now um, throughout Wales. And that's been an interesting experience. So, you know, there, there, there have been some dimensions in terms of digital engagement where we're reaching people in a different way and people that possibly we wouldn't have been able to engage with otherwise. And the, and the nature of the engagement is different, you know. So, you know, there are some silver linings as, as well. And I think, we, you know, we've been having quite high numbers turning up to those digital meetings, certainly numbers that you would be very proud of, you know, if it was, if it was uh, physical attendance. So, yeah, so you've just got to work within, work within the limits and try to, to get some, some sense of momentum. But, you know, I, I, I'm sort of old-fashioned political orator, you know, and so I, I miss rallies and uh, can't wait for that first Yes Cymru march whenever it comes. So electability has been a focus of yours pretty much since you were elected as, as leader, as it's sensible to be, I guess. You had the Angus Robertson Commissioner Review into Plaid and its electability. Do you think Plaid is now more electable than it has been in the past? Well, I, I think every party all the time, isn't it, has to go through periods of, of, of renewal. And I, I think that's, you know, that's true of our party, like any, anyone else, because the nature of politics changes. I mean, new technology, as we were just uh, uh, discussing, and, uh, and how that, you know, impacts upon, uh, you know, the nature of campaigning. We set up, uh, re-established effectively the, the, the National Campaign Unit that we set up when I was Director of Elections in 2007. And so there's been a number of innovations in, in the way that we conduct uh, uh, campaigning. Obviously, we've, those have been impacted as, as we've just discussed by the nature of the pandemic. But yes, I mean, in terms of the party um, organizational uh, apparatus, then I think, you know, there've been some major improvements uh, there. In terms of electability, you know, the, the thing that really um, is the difference between winning or losing election campaigns is who's got the best story. Um, Policy uh, program is absolutely, you know, um, important, c- clearly. Um, but actually, if you look at, you know, the history of, 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 of politics, particularly when you have great shifts, you know, sort of a, a shift from, from a period of uh, a political dominance by one political party and a, 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 a you know, shift in another direction, then it's the ability to tell a compelling story um, that is is critical. Why? Because you're taking people on a bit on a journey, 
And to take people on the journey, you have to have a very strong sense of where we've been, where we are and where we're going. And I think that's that's what we've tried to uh, focus on in creating a compelling story uh, for Wales. Uh, and I think there are, there's, there are positives there uh, in terms of the political landscape because we've seen this huge shift, haven't we, on independence. Uh, and so something, something is moving in Welsh, in Welsh politics, which often has gone through periods where nothing seems to be moving. And we've had, of course, 100 years of dominance by one political party, uh, haven't we? But there, there is, there, there's something in the air at the moment in, in Welsh politics. And, you know, my job over the next five weeks, particularly, is to, is to build a bridge for people that, many of whom will have never voted Plaid, but are thinking about it as election and so on, particularly around the national question. So we have a unique, unprecedented situation where, according to some opinion polls at least, um, even the majority of Labour voters are now pro-independent, so they're detached from the leadership of their uh, party on, on the question of Wales and its future, and they're more in touch, with, more aligned with us. Um, but they they haven't voted for us historically. So how do we create that that bridge for them to, to come and join us? And it is it's telling that that story about Wales and a and a compelling vision which can inspire them and you know give them a sense of hope as well, which is probably something that we need now more than ever, isn't it? I was I was just about to ask you about uh, the growth in in Yes Cymru and support for independence, but there hasn't been a, a, an equivalent jump applied why do you think up until now people haven't been willing to vote for applied even if they believe in independence or even indicate that in support for opinion polls these opinion polls that show up to half of labor voters supporting independence don't show a jump in support for applied coming at the same time do they usually yeah, I, I mean, I, and I hope that's going to change. Obviously, over the next in the next few weeks, and I, I you know, anecdotally, certainly, I, I, I you know, I, I can sense that something's happening, and particularly amongst younger Labour voters, uh, and many of them are uh, very strongly pro-independence, have no, have traditionally allied themselves with the Labour Party, and you can sense that there is an opening there, and the question is, is you know, in politics, is can you make the most of that opening? And I think that we've got a great um, we've got a great fun, uh, platform to do that in this election because we are um, of offering a very radical program, which is clearly to the left of Labour, uh, Labour Party in Wales. You know, the fact that I'm having an argument with the First Minister about you know free school meals and extending free school meals it, it's kind of strange in in in, in many in many ways. Uh, and it may be uncomfortable, I think, for many members and supporters of the, of the Labour Party. But certainly we are clearly um, to the left of Labour in terms of our, uh, in terms of our policy programme. And at the same time, allied with increasing numbers of, of, of Labour, uh, Labour voters on independence. So there's, 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 a, there's, a, there's a great political window of opportunity there. What's happening in the opinion polls is kind of interesting, isn't it? Because uh, at least, uh, certainly at least the last couple of opinion polls they show us up on on uh, the last Senate election, but we're you know we're still, I mean, what nine or so uh, percentage points behind Labour. So that's the kind of uh, that's where we are in that. But they're showing a, a, an, an increase in our Westminster vote, and almost the traditional situation where our Westminster vote was considerably below the, the Senate vote. That seems to be um, coming to an end. So. The way that I interpret that is a lot of applied tactical voters, which would traditionally split their ticket, you know, between Westminster and the Senate, are now clearly voting for applied, deciding we're going to vote applied in all elections. As political scientists talk about salience, don't they? And, and, and the importance of independence as a decisive issue is rising. And so a, a lot of those voters then are deciding well, we're going to we're, we're going to vote for Plaid right across the piece, which means that our vote is is solidifying and it's getting closer to um, to twenty percent, uh, um, uh, you know, at the Westminster vote as well, which means that we've got a very very strong base at a point where actually 
the other two parties are very very uh, fluid you know yeah in terms of the, the, the I mean, almost uh, depending on um, weekly events in the pandemic yeah you can see the labor and conservative vote going down plaid is like slowly creeping up on uh, you know on on this very very solid base of support that's not a bad place uh, for you to be in going into an election because you know that basically your support is solid and you want to get across the gain line in an election campaign, there's the opportunity there for you to get across the gate line. To your, thinking about Welsh uh, sporting psychology, you know, being an underdog, you know, being in third place but within contention at this point in the game, is not a bad place to be. W Wales, in many sporting uh, contests, you know, wins in the last few minutes of the game, and so I, I, I've always thought that if we were going to do well. We, it was going to be a closing argument weekend when people decided, uh, obviously a lot of postal voters will have already happened, but particularly our vote is strongest amongst the younger demographic. And it's those voters that are more likely to be turning up on polling day to vote that are going to be critical to this election. And I, I think it could be a version of 2017 Westminster result, yeah, where uh, Jeremy Corbyn's Labour Party did much better than expected because of the so-called youth quick. If young people, and of course there are more young voters at this election uh, because of the, the 16 to 17 year old enfranchisement, if young people turn out at, at, at historically unprecedented numbers of this Senate election, then Plaid is, 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 I think, in the running for a very, very good result indeed. Are you at all worried, though, that if you wouldn't, if you didn't win a, a majority, that it would be seen as a rejection of the concept of independence in Wales? Because that's certainly what the narrative will be in the media. I, I don't think so, because I, mean, I, I think this is the first election where any, any party has gone into it with a clear timetable for an independence referendum. And, you know, I think historically, you know, within the national movement in Wales, and certainly within, within Plaid Cymru, there's, there's sometimes been a nervousness about talking in too tangible, talking in terms of which is too tangible about, about independence. Independence was, was the long-term ambition of the party, or long-term vision, etc. You know, I, I was clear when I took over as leader that we wanted to uh, foreground independence, that we didn't, you know, we, we want to, wanted not, not to be nervous or shy about, uh, uh, you know, hiding a light under, under a bushel, as it were. And, you know, our vote has, has gone up compared to last time. So I think that, you know, the, 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 the takeaway, um, if Plaid do well at, at this election, then I think the takeaway is, look, gone are the days when you need to be nervous in any way, shape or form about whether independence is a vote loser. Independence is a vote winner, if you want to look at it in those narrow terms, because of the, the nature of the level of, of support in, it, in any case. Yeah, I, 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 I think that this, this election is going to be critically important in terms of mainstreaming independence as, as, as a key issue. And, uh, you know, I look forward to the debates and, and having that uh, discussion. Uh, I'd like to talk about uh, a couple of your pledges, if, if possible. You talk about reforming council tax. Uh, what is your plan for council tax reform and, and what will it cost to, to do it? Well, obviously, there'll, there'll be some one-off cost in terms, in terms of uh, any reform programme, but, but, I mean, but that's you know, a f fairly minimal, um, really. The, the heart of the, the, the reform programme, of course, is the need to get away from the situation which currently uh, exists, whereby council tax is, is the most regressive tax of all. And I think there's a, you know, there's a broad consensus amongst progressive opinion that we've got to address that, uh, essentially by um, at least having a much more proportional uh, tax. At the moment, you, you're, you're much more likely to um, pay a higher proportion of your housing wealth uh, as uh, through council tax at the bottom end uh, of the um, uh, of the banding uh, of the bands compared to the top end. So it, it, it's essentially, and obviously the, the Welsh government has commissioned research on this it's from the Institute for Fiscal Studies and Wales Governance Centre, uh, I think, has, uh, has written about this as well. And so as a first step, um, ultimately, we want to move to um, get rid of council tax and also business rates. Business rates is also a tax which um, has, you know, a number of problems uh, with it. It's a disincentive uh, to investment, etc. It's unfair 
burden, uh, particularly on small businesses compared to large, larger businesses, particularly those digital, um, li, digitally driven uh, retailers like Amazon. Uh, so we'd like to move to a single uh, land and property ta tax uh, eventually, but uh, we'll do that in stages, moving business rates over to a, um, a form of land value taxation initially and then uh, integrating the two. But in the initial period, because of its importance in terms of uh, fairness, then we're going to um, introduce uh, more bans and, in, and, and have a more proportional rate so that we can have uh, fairness built into the way the council tax is currently implemented. You also pledged that you're going to build 50,000 new social and affordable homes. Is this a, a realistic target or is it just an attempt to outflank Labour on the left, like you said earlier? Yeah, no, I, I, it is a realistic target. It, it, it's, it, it's, it's necessary, really, because it, uh, I think um, Crisis uh, did uh, publish a report in 2016 uh, which had a 15-year um, plan for the level of, uh, of genuinely affordable housing that we needed to build. And we haven't been building over the last five years uh, anything like the the level that they were setting out then. So there's, we've, we've lost some ground already uh, over the last five years. And when we think about the situation where we've got 67,000 uh, families on housing waiting lists in, in Wales, I mean, that's the figure from, from December, um, we have to be building at, at this rate in order to end the housing crisis in Wales. We're not going to be able to end, end the housing crisis through large developers, you know, Persimmon, Taylor, uh, Taylor Wimpy and all the rest of it, uh, building houses which are by and large out of, the, uh, you know, way beyond um, the affordability uh, of um, people on average wages in Wales. So it has to be driven by the public sector, building um, at a scale which we, we admittedly we haven't seen in terms of genuinely affordable houses to buy into rent since the early 1970s. You know, we have done it before. We did it in the early 1970s. That was when there was no devolution in the Conservative uh, administration at Westminster. We did it in the in the early 50s when there was no devolution and a Conservative uh, government at Westminster. So, um, you know, if we were able to do it under those circumstances in the past, then, you know, we, we, we have the capacity to, to do it. Um, we, we will be creating a, a national housing agency um, modelled on the... Um, a number of housing agents, public housing agencies across the world, like South Korea, which have been very, very effective uh, at coordinating uh, uh, building programs. So working with small uh, builders uh, locally, with partners, both um, local authorities, of course, and, and housing agencies. And, you know, we're convinced we can get up to that level. It does require um, more uh, capital in investment, and we've got some ambitious plans in terms of expanding infrastructure investment using innovative finance. But World Government is doing it to some extent, but we need to increase that further. Obviously, it's not your desired outcome, but do you think there is enough common ground between you and other parties in Wales to form a coalition if required? I, I'm, a, I'm a pluralist by, by, by nature. I mean, I, I, I think that um, cooperation isn't, isn't a bad thing, and, and um, we, we need more cooperative attitudes, I think, in politics in, 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 in general. If we're going to solve our problem, so, but I think for for us, obviously, if we, we're short a majority, then by its nature that requires cooperation. Uh, I think we we believe that it's essential that Wales goes in a, in, in a new direction. We we feel that um, we've been on a particular path the last tw tw twenty years, more or less, and. Um, just, you know, more of the same isn't going to deliver the step change in all of the areas that we want to see uh, progress in, you know, economically and socially. So leading a government is, is pretty important to us. Um, but then, yes, absolutely working with, with, working with political uh, parties that we can work with if we're short a majority would be a necessary uh, element in that. But there is this important distinction, isn't there, between um, being a junior partner to a, to a party that's been in power for over 20 years. And we're the best will in the world, really. There's a natural tendency, isn't there, uh, I think, when, once you've been in power for that long, whichever political you know, party, you know, Labour, Labour's been in power, of course, you know, since 1997, because you've got to count the two years before that, before the, the, the formation of the Senate. Political parties run out of steam. They run out of ideas, you know, and, and, and I just really sense that that is the core problem in, in Wales at the, at the moment is 
there's not even enough critical challenge coming from within the Labour Party. We 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 kind of uh, are going a little bit round in circles, aren't we? I mean, I, I feel as if we're discussing the same old problems that we have been kind of worrying away at for 20 years. And, you know, surely we need to be moving on to the solutions. I mean, take health and social care. It's a wide ranging consensus, isn't there? That we need to integrate, we need to bring social care, if you like, into the NHS family. Well, why are we still discussing, you know, the diagnosis? Why aren't we actually implementing the prescription, the cure uh, to that situation? And, and that's repeated right across the board. And that's why leadership change is important because it's only through leadership change, I, I think, that you can get um, a, a change in, in, the, in, in, in the ideas and the vision that's going to drive a, a genuinely transformational programme. What do you think the major challenges facing Wales will be in the next Senate term? And, and why do you think you are the right person to, to take them on? If I got to choose just one, then I would say that we, we need to absolutely shift our entire economic model. So we, in, 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 in essence, Wales, uh, in terms of its economic strategy, has been following one idea for the best part of 50, 60 years, which is checkbook economics, um, luring in inward investment, uh, which comes for a while, creates some jobs and then often disappears. Um, and that that is not going to deliver the kind of economic change that we need, which is quality jobs in every community in Wales. So we've got to change our economic model to one which is grounded in the idea of building up our own uh, locally owned, domestically owned uh, enterprises. And that's a kind of a uh, that's a, an absolutely radical uh, shift in, in, in direction and in terms of priority. And, you know, that's that's got to be the, the, the core. We've got some of the language of, of that in terms of the foundational economy, but in practical terms, it's still a marginal idea within a, 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 an economic policy from, from uh, the Welsh Labour government, which is still very much along those traditional track. So that is going to be the, 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 the core in terms of, uh, the policy uh, priority, because from that, so much else uh, flows. Um, I'd have to say as well, for me, critically important is um, investing in the young uh, and particularly lifting uh, the one in three almost of our children that live in poverty um, and, you know, the one in four of, 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 of all adults. But investing early and the Welsh child payment policy, um, uh, critically uh, um, important that we actually uh, have a plan to realise the target that was dropped uh, last year. And to me, you know, this is this goes to the core of you know why I'm in politics. Um, coming out of the minor strike, you know, I, I, I in the minor strike and beyond. You know, I, I had a, I had one of those blue tokens in school. So the free school meals policy is absolutely essential to me as well. We have to um, get away from a situation where we are we're under investing in our future because we are under investing in 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 in, a, in our young. So that's going to be absolutely critical. And then you know, to me, independence is very much linked with both of those because I think one of the reasons why the independence movement has grown is it's a very hopeful and positive uh, and progressive mo movement, and it is all about, uh, I think. Um, creating a Wales in, in which Wales as a nation realises its potential, but everyone within it as, as well. And so that's why I think it has the traction, because it's inspiring people with a sense of uh, possibility. And, you know, what is independence after all? But it is this massive blank sheet of paper that we get to write the future on. Adam Price, thank you very much. This is the second of three interviews with candidates to be First Minister. You can listen to our interview with Mark Drakeford on the feed. And if you're listening to this in the future, you may also want to listen to our episode with Andrew R.T. Davis. If you are enjoying what you're hearing on our feed, please don't forget to find us on Medium at Hereife Blog Cymru, on Facebook at Hereife Blog Cymru, and on Twitter at Hereife Blog. Thank you for listening to Hereife. If you like what you heard, please don't forget to subscribe, rate and review.